Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church, a church with heart in the heart of the city of Columbia, South Carolina. We're so glad that you have joined us this morning for our worship experience. We are so thankful that we have the opportunity to connect in this way. We also want to let you know that you can find out all the ways you can connect with our community of faith at wsmethodist.org. We welcome you to share in worship, to share in our online Sunday school classes, Bible studies, and other offerings throughout the week and the months ahead. As we continue during this season, I want to remind you that next Sunday is the first Sunday in Advent. It's an amazing thing to, to ponder at this particular time. As we prepare for this wonderful season of joy and hope, we will begin with our Advent Festival at 3 o'clock on Sunday, November the 29th. You can come there and make an Advent wreath to take home, or you can pick one up and take it home to make in the privacy of your home. As we are continuing to live into these times, we remind you that we do invite you to come, but be prepared to socially distance and wear masks, even for this event. We hope to have some special type things for our children so that they'll be able to stay busy and help you as we prepare for the Advent season. I also want to remind you that our outdoor services will continue at 4 o'clock on December the 6th, at 4 o'clock on December the 20th. That service will be a carol sing with readings to complement those carols. And then on December the 24th, Christmas Eve, we will have a service at 12 noon and a second service at 4 o'clock. We hope that these services provide opportunity for you and your family to come and worship in person with us as we continue to live into and through this time of pandemic. I ask you to please consider your neighbors as you gather with us. Those masks really make a difference. Wherever you go, wear a mask, practice social distancing, and remember that the best way we can love our neighbors is to take care of them by participating in the community effort to beat this pandemic. As we continue together, I invite you to worship the Lord. And now, if you would join me in the opening prayer, let us pray. God of eternity, we stand with the courage of those who insisted, even in perilous times, that not even the most powerful rulers of this earth hold our eternal destiny in their hands. We are secure in Christ, whose reign is just, whose power is endless, and whose love is unfathomable. God of eternity, we join the chorus of saints who continue to declare that Christ is our King. Amen. Thank you. 
Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord who made us is God. We are the Lord's. We are the people of God, the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God's faithfulness to all generations. And now please join me for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Old Testament lesson today comes from the 34th chapter of Ezekiel, and we are reading selected verses. God's message came to me, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherd leaders of Israel. Yes, prophesy. Tell those shepherds, God the Master says, doom to you shepherds of Israel, feeding your own mouths. Aren't shepherds supposed to feed sheep? You drink the milk. You make clothes from the wool. You roast the lambs. But you don't feed the sheep. You don't build up the weak ones. Don't heal the sick. Don't doctor the injured. Don't go after the strays. Don't look for the lost. You bully and badger them. And now they're scattered every which way because there was no shepherd scattered and easy pickings for wolves and coyotes, scattered, my sheep, exposed and vulnerable across mountains and hills, 
my sheep scattered all over the world and no one out looking for them. God the Master says, from now on, I myself am the shepherd. I'm going looking for them. As shepherds go after their flocks when they get scattered, I'm going after my sheep. I'll rescue them from all the places they've been scattered to in the storms. I'll bring them back from foreign peoples, gather them from foreign countries, and bring them back to their home country. I'll feed them on the mountains of Israel, along the streams, among their own people. I'll lead them into lush pasture so they can roam the mountain pastures of Israel, graze at leisure, feed in the rich pastures on the mountains of Israel. And I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. I myself will make sure they get plenty of rest. I'll go after the lost. I'll collect the strays. I'll doctor the injured. I'll build up the weak ones and oversee the strong ones so they're not exploited. Therefore, God the Master says, I myself am stepping in and making things right between the plump sheep and the skinny sheep because you forced your way with shoulder and rump and butted at all the weaker animals with your horns till you scattered them all over the hills. I'll come in and save my dear flock. No longer let them be pushed around. I'll step in and set things right between one sheep and another. I'll appoint one shepherd over them all, my servant David. He'll feed them. He'll be their shepherd. And I, God, will be their God. My servant David will be their prince. I, God, have spoken. Here ends the reading of this lesson. May it be for us the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Today, we observe Christ the King Sunday, where we celebrate the splendor and majesty of Jesus Christ, who rules for all eternity. So I want to look at what kind of ruler Jesus is. How does the Lord rule over us? Well, one way, the way that is talked about in this passage, is as a shepherd. Uh, using the metaphor of a shepherd for a ruler or leader was common practice in the ancient Middle East. It was common because of the qualities needed by a good shepherd. Shepherding was hard work because shepherds not only had to care for the flock, but also protect it from thieves and predators. That meant that shepherds had to be willing to sacrifice their comfort and well-being for the sake of the flock. For instance, good shepherds would keep sheep in a sheepfold at night. A sheepfold was um, an enclosure that had only one opening so that the, when the sheep were in it, they would be protected from predators. Uh, the thing is, it generally didn't have a door. So the shepherd would sleep across the opening of the sheepfold. That way, any predator would have to literally go over the shepherd to get to the sheep. Now this was great for the sheep because it kept them in the fold overnight and kept predators or anything that might be harmful away from them. But think about how it was for the shepherd to lay across the opening of a, a pen, an enclosure where sheep had walked back and forth numerous times. It cannot have been comfortable. But a good shepherd was willing to sacrifice personal comfort for the sake of the sheep. While good leaders aren't called to sleep across the opening of a sheepfold, they do need to be willing to make personal sacrifices for the sake of their flock. Ezekiel, in this passage, gives us a stark contrast between bad shepherds and good shepherds. In particular, he shows what happens, happened to the Israelites when they were led by bad shepherds and what life will look like with God as their shepherd. The Israelites had been ruled by bad leaders for years. Uh, these leaders did not lead the people in the ways of God in the ways of love and justice. And their poor leadership resulted in the nation being conquered and taken off into exile. Patricia just read Ezekiel's description of the bad shepherds. The characteristics that stick out for me are how a bad shepherd is self-focused and not interested in justice, in making sure that the weak and vulnerable members of the flock are allowed to thrive, to flourish. This bad leadership had real consequences. It resulted in the people of Israel being conquered and taken off into exile in the land of Babylon. They were living in a foreign land with a different religion, different language, and different customs. It was a difficult time for them because the Israelites felt disconnected from God. However, as bleak as things were, there was hope. God saw their plight and told them that God would bring them home from exile and protect them from the exploitation of the bad leaders. God would take control of God's flock. Then God, through Ezekiel, told the people what type of shepherd the Lord would be. God would be a caring, just shepherd. As their shepherd, God would seek out, find, and restore the lost and scattered among them. God would bring them back to their home and would ensure that there was justice in the land. In addition to God being with them at this time of separation, anxiety, and confusion, God also promised to send a good shepherd that would come from the line of David. The coming of this shepherd would fulfill the promise that God had made to David that he would have a throne that would be established forever. The shepherd God is talking about is Jesus Christ, 
the fully human, fully divine Son of God who comes centuries later from the line of David and was our Messiah. Jesus understood the type of leader he needed to be. And in John 10, 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus came to show us how a good shepherd leads, and it's with compassion and humility. Through Jesus' actions, we learned that in God's eyes, everyone has worth. Jesus Christ sought out and lifted up the marginalized, all the people that society overlooked. He elevated the weak and downtrodden by showing that they were worthy of his attention and care. Consequently, he healed them, spent time with them, and loved them. All of these outcast groups, like beggars and lepers, children, women, tax collectors, and sinners. He showed by lifting up these people what justice looks like. God also is showing us in this passage and through the person of Jesus Christ that a good leader cares about those he or she leads, makes sure all are taken care of, and is willing to sacrifice so that the people flourish. A good leader leads by example, so that those who follow can emulate their leader. Since Jesus showed love to all and cared for everyone, particularly those that society minimized or ignored, he expects us to do the same thing. If we are really the sheep of his flock, we will emulate the good shepherd. We see what Jesus expects of his followers in Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. In this passage, Christ separates the sheep from the goats. And the criteria he uses is, what did you do for the least of these? The sheep and the goats are all members of the same flock, but they differ in how they treated people. The goats either actively ignored or passively didn't notice the marginalized people around them and the injustices they endured. When Jesus separates them, he notes that the sheep, the ones on his right, helped people who were in need. If they saw someone who was hungry or thirsty, sick or in prison, they did something about it. By coming to the aid of those in need, these people were correcting existing injustices. As per Patricia said last week, actions like this bring the reign of God a little closer to reality. Now today, many of us may feel like the scattered sheep of Israel. We may feel isolated and vulnerable because the coronavirus keeps us separated from others. In addition, many of us are anxious about the economy and our country, and we feel vulnerable and exposed. It seems like there's a lot more bad news than good news these days, and we might feel like we're at the mercy of people or institutions that are more powerful than we are and don't care about us. But there's good news, even with all the bad stuff going on. Just like God saw the sheep of Israel scattered all over, God sees us in our anxiety, our isolation, and our vulnerability. God cares for us just as good shepherds care for their flocks. And God will seek us out when we are lost and bring us home. God will take care of us, and God will lift up the weak and limit the strong. You might be thinking, I hadn't seen God doing that. And you might not have, because God is subtle. God uses human beings to do God's work. Now, I know that things on earth won't be perfect 
until Jesus Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. But the reign of God becomes a little more apparent every time the people of God love and help others and seek justice. When we do this, we bring a little bit of heaven to earth. Every time one of us looks at a person in need and helps that person, we bring a little bit of heaven to earth. Every time we feed the hungry by helping at the soup cellar or our Sunday dinners or participating in the backpack program for Alcorn Middle School, we bring a little bit of heaven to earth. Every time we treat someone with respect, we bring a little bit of heaven to earth. When we recognize that everyone is a beloved child of God, regardless of ethnicity, skin color, religion, or political affiliation, we bring a little bit of heaven to earth. When we call a friend or neighbor just to check in and see how they're doing, we bring a little bit of heaven to earth. And when we write a note of appreciation or compliment someone on a job well done, we bring a little bit of heaven to earth. When we act in these ways, looking out for those around us, we are acting like Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who is our leader and our example. We are, we are able to love others because of God's love for us. Now this love is beyond our comprehension, but even though we can't fully understand or grasp it, it fills us and gives us the ability to love others with the type of active, compassionate love that Jesus showed. When we love and put our love into action, the world changes. The last become first, the low are lifted up, justice prevails, our life here more closely re resembles the life to come, and we bring a little bit of heaven to earth. Thanks be to God. And now, go into the world full of God's love for you, so that you may show that love to others and bring a little bit of heaven to earth. Amen. <laughs>